everybody, I'm Susie, and I'm so excited. Today, I have April Lee from Love Our Real Life. That's correct. Yes, loveourreallife.com. And she's going to share with us how she's grown her blog to a success and um, the how she's juggled motherhood along with blogging and also having an awesome career. So April, if you want to introduce yourself, we would love to learn more about you. First, Susie, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Um, once again, my name's April. I'm author of Love Our Real Life. A um, little bit about me, I'm married, uh, to my husband's name is Jason. We've been married for about 18 years. Uh, we have two kids and um, they're not littles anymore, but uh, they're still little to me. Uh, my son is 15 and he's a freshman in high school and my daughter's 13 and she's a seventh grader. Um, started my blog in January of 2017, wow, okay. so it's been about three years. Awesome. Um, in addition to blogging, I also work part-time as a, a hospital-based outpatient speech pathologist. So. Okay, so what do you blog about? Yes, so Love Our Real Life is a DIY, home decor, and organization blog. So um, really a home blog is what it's about. Okay. Okay. And then why did you decide to start this home blog on top of everything else that's going on in your life? Sure. Sure. Um, kind of sounds crazy when you think about it, but, um, so I love my job as a speech pathologist, but there was always, um, I wanted to own my own business. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to have a business of some sort, but, um, my kids schedules and my husband, he, uh, is an attorney and he works a lot of hours. So, I, I did not want to take a lot of time away from my family and I knew a brick and mortar business would be all consuming. And um, so I thought a blog was a great way to kind of get my feet wet with a business mm -hmm. um, and have the best, or at least I hoped the best of both worlds. So I could, you know, do the whole business thing, but at the same time, be able to stay with my family I as much it. as possible, of course. No, I love it. I love it. And why this, this exact niche of home decor and lifestyle blog? So um, I was finding that uh, when my girlfriends and I would get together, we would talk about, you know, just different projects we were doing in our homes and different uh, organization or uh, just painting furniture or whatever it might be. And one of the things that I noticed that um, we were always talking about, oh, I hate this about my house or I hate that about my house. And it just bothered me that you know, and I was, I was doing it too. And I was thinking, you know, this is where we're raising our families, our right. homes. Yeah. So I don't know. I just felt kind of a passion about, you know, finding small ways to love our homes a little bit more. Um, so we could have an environment that, uh, you know, was more of a happy, peaceful place for our families. That's awesome. I love it. So you, how many hours do you work as a speech pathologist? Is that a full-time job? It's not, it's a part-time okay. job. I work two and occasionally three days okay. each week um, and it's scheduled. So I have scheduled days. So um, with my kids' ages, they're in school yeah. Monday through Friday. So on the days I'm not uh, at work as a speech therapist, I am able to spend those days blogging. So um, summers are a little bit rough just because my kids are home, Yeah, but that's, uh, so I usually get two to three days to work on my blog and just, of course, managing a household, which, oh yeah, that's a lot. Sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> it's a full-time job. Right. It's right. a full-time job. It's like sure. we have our job during the day and then we have our nightly job of like folding laundry and cooking dinner. And it's never ending. And I think we all can relate to that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Last night I forgot to pack the kids lunches because I was just vacuuming and folding laundry. And this morning I'm like, uh -oh. Sweetie, you can just you can just buy lunch today, okay? Right. <laughs> mommy, mommy forgot. It. <laughs> so life is just being flexible and right. going with it. Right. So I think she's gonna tell all her friends today at lunch, be like, "Yeah, my mommy was tired, so I get to buy my lunch." <laughs> well, they can all probably relate. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So on top of that, um, what are your best like time management skills to juggle motherhood, a job, and sure. your blog? Sure. Um, so for me, I feel like. Staying organized is, is crucial. Um, having a plan. Um, I try to sit down and Sunday is a good planning day for me. And actually my husband and I, we try to sit down every Sunday and plan out our so week smart. together. Yeah. Um, so we know what to expect, just what's coming up with both of our work schedules, but also our family schedules. 
and that gives me a better idea of where I can plug in work. Um, so even though I'm off, off work from my speech job on some of those days, I might not be able to, to focus on the blog as much as I'd like to, but um, just being organized is very helpful. So I am realistic about my to-do list. I think I get caught up sometimes as many of us do with all of my to-dos and having a better sense of um, how much time or blocks in my day I have really helps me. Definitely, definitely. So um, John used to be corporate and in corporate life, we used to have um, a weekly stand-up. So now we've moved it to the Sunday stand-up where you go through what you have to do for the week. And we don't always do it, but when we do, it's such a good practice. I'm glad you guys do it too, but it just sets your week up so that John knows, okay, I have these recording times, um, right. he needs to do this, the kids have this on Friday, so. It's, it's helpful. helpful so we can, we can coordinate. And you know, it, since we've started doing that, so it's probably the last year or so since we've started doing that, we've had a lot fewer incidences of, oh, wait a second, who's getting the kids? Or, oh, who's driving them there? Or whatever it might be. So it's just been helpful for us. That's awesome. Kind of be a team, I guess, with the living this life, I guess. Yeah, you have to, definitely. Um, so back to the blog, how do you actually get traffic to your blog? A lot of my students are new and they're wondering like what worked for you? Okay, so for me, my biggest traffic driver at this point is Pinterest. Uh -huh. um, and I know Pinterest, uh, works pretty well for crafts and DIYs, which is the primary focus of my blog. So um, I'm still working on SEO. Um, I'm actually taking the, the Stupid Simple SEO course and good course. going through that, it's great, it's great. Um, but it's kind of a slow game. Yeah. And Pinterest, um, I wish I would have put a bigger focus on that sooner. Uh, it's, it's great for traffic, for me at least. All right, so what's your strategy? Do you manually pin? Do you create your own pins? What do you do? So I use a combination of, I actually took uh, Jennifer Maker's Pinterest launch plan, mm -hmm. course, which is incredibly reasonable, reasonably priced, I think, for what you get. Awesome. Um, I took that and I do a combination of just little things I've picked up through um, different Facebook groups and just different strategies. But um, I do both manual pinning and tailwind, okay. uh, both. So I don't think I could do it all with no. just manual, just with my schedule. I know a lot of people have great success with that, but I just haven't found the time for it. Right, right, right. And all to group boards, niche boards, where do you pin these pins to? I have both. I know a lot of uh, groups are talking about, uh, Facebook groups are talking about Pinterest groups are, group boards are kind of dying out. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Um, I do still see some success from my group boards, but my biggest success is from my most popular personal boards on my uh, Pinterest. So. Awesome. awesome, that's good to yeah. know. And where do you create your pins? Do you use Canva or PicMonkey or? Um, you know, for whatever reason, Canva uh, has never been as intuitive for me. I know it. a lot of people love it more and I, I use it for a lot of things, but for me, PicMonkey just makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I use it for almost, almost exclusively for all of my pins. I love it. Awesome. I recently got the uh, Pick Monkey app on my phone, Ooh. which has been kind of fun because when I'm driving my kids from, you know, whatever activity and I'm sitting there and I have about, you know, 15, 20 minutes as I'm waiting, yeah. um, it's kind of fun to be able to make pins while I'm out and about. So Ooh, that's a good tip. Yeah. And I know with the Pick Monkey app, you can actually remove backgrounds. Yes. Yes. It has a nice little feature. I just that. started with the app, so I'm just learning. Okay. So with, with the phone <laughs> app. So, but it's fun. I'm excited about that. Awesome. Okay. So we talked about traffic. Now let's switch gears and talk about monetization, if you don't mind. Sure. How do you make money and what works for you? Okay. So I mentioned that Pinterest is where I get most of my traffic. Um, and that's actually where I make most of my uh, money is from ads. Okay, um, awesome. I'm on Mediavine and I've been in Mediavine since April of this past year. So that's since awesome. April of 2019, um, it was just a game changer for me personally. Yeah. Um, prior to that, I wasn't uh, making a whole lot um, and I still have a long way to go in terms of, of revenue, but it, it was a big difference once I started uh, getting that ad revenue. Right, right. My traffic continued to grow as I just got better with Pinterest. And I also still have a long way to go with that as well. But um, 
So primarily Mediavine, but then my second um, would be Amazon affiliates. That's awesome. And what's the affiliates, but yeah. And what's the breakdown between the two? Sure. Um, oh my goodness. Probably in all honesty, uh, probably 80% ads and 20% Amazon, I would say. Um, possibly more so uh, ads would be even more than 80%. So I definitely need to, to d- diversify. That's but okay. Like, you know, I'm just, you yeah. know, enjoying that part of it. I mean, that is fine. Everybody like starts with one avenue of making money right. and one avenue of getting traffic. And then once you feel comfortable with that, then you can start venturing to others. So you're, you're perfectly fine. You're doing awesome. Right. Gosh. I'm, I'm excited to, to have that. So it's even crazy. I feel like um, just being able to, to say, you know, to my husband that I'm actually making money on my <laughs> blog now. I actually make more than my part-time speech job at this point with is to me just crazy. So that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I'm so proud of you. Like that Thank you. something you started from your home and this was your dream in the beginning to do right. something that your business. Yeah. Your own business is flexible and you're making more than your other job, which yeah. I know you love both. And right. they both bring you fulfillment. Right. Awesome. And at the position I am, it's kind of nice to have both because I, if my kids were smaller and, and home, yeah. um, I don't think I would be able to juggle both. But um, just with the stages of life that they are in, it, it works for us. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. So are you building your email list at this time? Yes, I actually um, have looked through and, and taken a lot of tips from your, uh, is it list by number? Yeah. yeah. The email <laughs> your, so it's, it's really great. Um, that is definitely an area I need to, I need to go through your course again, actually. Um, I have about 4,000 on my email, oh, list. um, awesome. give or take kind of, um, but I'm hovering right around there at this point. So, okay. um, at this point I feel like I need to, um, grow that. So yeah. that's on my list of things to focus on through. Yeah. But 4,000 is amazing. It, it's, it's good. It's yeah. good. And what helped you get to that? What incentive did you offer to get? to grow your email list? Sure. Um, various, actually, probably the first time I ever saw you, Susie, was I was Googling how to make printables. Yay! And I saw your YouTube <laughs> video, and that's actually how I found you in the very beginning. Um, so offering freebies is great. Um, I think we all kind of like uh, to find things that make our life a little bit easier. So I've used various freebies just to get people to sign up. Um, and I actually have one tripwire, so I'm working on products is also on my list, but the okay. tripwire has been, I think the whole thing can be kind of fascinating actually. Um, so the fact that people are actually buying those things that we create, it's kind of exciting. It's yeah. kind of an amazing thing. It is, it is so amazing. And I think as bloggers um, or as moms, when we go to somebody else's blog and we see they have a small product, even if it's like under $10 or whatnot, you're like, I'm supporting another mom. I'm supporting her right. business. Like it, it feels, it feels very supportive, the community of blogging. So it definitely does. Yeah. I'm so glad you're getting into product creation. Yes. It's, my favorite. it's exciting. So when you just started blogging, what do you wish you didn't do? What do you feel like you wasted your time on? So for me, it was a completely, um, it's, it's, it's a business and it's something different than I had ever known before. So I feel like I wasted a lot of my time just floundering around trying to do everything. Yeah. Um, I wish I would have um, had someone to guide me at the very beginning. Uh, I know you've got an amazing course. I took the uh, Abby Lawson from Just a Girl in Her Blog. Yeah, she's a great course um, months and months and months after I had started, I, I uh, actually started blogging, I started her course and I wish I would have had that from the very beginning. Um, and I know now she doesn't have that course and she recommends yours by the way, in a lot of groups. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, Uh, I had no idea. (laughs) I've heard her recommend yours before. So it's great. Um, but just having someone to guide you and to keep you from going into all the different directions, because there's so many different things that you can be wasting your time on instead of just getting the foundation set up. Yeah, I think definitely. And um, for new bloggers who are listening to this, what would you tell them when they're just starting their blog and they're kind of floundering trying to make this all work? 
So I think getting out content um, is important. Just, you know, finding where your audience is, um, knowing who you're writing for, um, and trying to be as relatable as possible, I think is helpful. And just, just put out content. Yeah. And the rest of it, I feel like, will come. Once you get um, several posts out, then you can start to get a little bit more focused. I agree. But I agree. Yeah. Sometimes just it it can be just that you know what do I write about and and just just get it out, just get some things out there. And you can always go. What I got hung up on is that perfection piece mm -hmm. and wanting everything perfect. And first of all, it, it will never be perfect <laughs> um, ever. And you can always update. I think that's one thing that. Um, worried me in the beginning and I, I it's funny you think that when you first start blogging that so many people are going to be reading your posts and no one is reading your <laughs> at, at first right. so it's okay if it's not perfect just get it out there and then you can always go back and update your posts and edit and you know you can do that endlessly so yeah. I love that I still update my old posts like I huh. I thought it was great and so on. And then a couple months later, I'm like, oh, I have new ideas. And then I got add more pin images or more content to it. So right. that's, that's, I think a lot of people get holed up and scared because they're so wanting to be perfect, but it's just not possible. And I love that advice. Right. Thank you, April. So where can we find you and where can we know more about you and improve our house and make it happier? So um, once again, my blog is, the name is Love Our Real Life. And um, I'm primarily in terms of the social uh, media pieces of it. I'm on Pinterest mostly, and I do have a Facebook and Instagram, um, awesome. and I'm hoping to grow those as well in the upcoming years. But those We'll put the links things. below in the yes. description. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much, April. I really appreciate this. It's awesome to see how you've grown your blog, and now you're making really good money with it. Um, so congratulations on your success. Thank you so much. And Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, April. Have an awesome day. You too. Thank you, Susie. Thanks.